So this is the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, and without delving into the specifics too much, this might be one of the very best and surprising smartphones of the year. The one downside, it's not going to be officially available on US shores. From the keynote to the actual handset itself, Huawei have made what you would call a camera first smartphone. The array at the back kind of gives that away, and it's hard not to talk about this being a core selling point, but more about how that performs later. The overall design feels like a retread and reimagining of what the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and the iPhone X would look like if fused, if only at the front of the phone. The big notch is clearly lifted from the iOS side of things, whilst the overall front shape and size is so Samsung that you'd be mistaken for thinking that this was the Galaxy S9 at first glance. Personally, I think it's a good combo though, as it's comfortable and the display is exceptionally bright and colourful, it compares well with the Note 9 for what it's worth. View angles are great and when cranked up to 1440p, it's awesome to interact with on a daily basis. The back glass continues the tapered design and whilst there are a few colour variations, including this signature twilight option, I'm pretty pleased that I got the opportunity to test the emerald green variation. I especially love the texture when you grip it. The big square notch has also become one of the most striking aspects of the Mate 20 Pro and I'm glad they differentiated themselves from the crowd with this stovetop look. It's incredibly striking and it's in a solid position in my opinion. Now back to the front, a new replica notch actually houses some copycat tech too. 3D face unlocking registration is quick and unlocking your phone even in poor lighting conditions is quick and easy. Although as I say every single time I am a fan of a fingerprint sensor. Which leads me to the in-display scanner. If you're worried then you need not be. The registration process does take a little longer than the average and the unlock speeds are a tiny bit slower but the in-display reader has won me over almost right away. The best bit is that there's no need to have to choose between the two either. Both it and the face unlocking work almost flawlessly in tandem, although face unlocking is a tad faster in my experience. Looking beyond the physical hardware, the Mate 20 Pro benefits from shipping with Android 9, albeit with the heavy MUI 9 fused into every single orifice. I personally can't say that I like it whatsoever, and the nuances and design choices are strange and often confusing, but the entire experience is slick and smooth. The phone does come with gesture navigation set to on as standard, but the implementation is often frustrating and poorly thought out to say the least. Unlike with stock Android, the back action is a root cause of all of my frustrations with the Mate 20 Pro. To exit your home screen, it's a simple swipe up from the bottom edge. Swiping in and holding from the bottom edge gives you your recent apps, much like iOS 12. Now for the back action. To go back, you swipe in from the left edge of the curved display. This poses a problem when in an application, or even in your home screen, as that is often where you find menus or secondary application screens. It became such an annoyance that I opted to re-enable the three key navigation method, and I found it much better, faster and just more enjoyable in day to day usage. It would be nice to see the gestures evolve or literally just take this standard stock implementation. Elsewhere MUR9 does have that awful single Apple-esque everything on the home screen layout which means you have to swipe between every page to get to app if you don't organise screens after install that is. Then there's the unnecessary duplicates with the extra applications you simply won't use, health, Huawei app gallery, high care, Huawei calendar and Huawei music just to name a few. As you can imagine sticking a third party launcher on might be worth doing straight out of the box. Now the battery, simply put it's one of the very best portions of the entire Mate 20 Pro experience. To say the battery life is good is an absolute understatement, I often saw screen on time close to double digits, anywhere from 7.5 to 9 hours was expected on a daily basis. In all honesty, I just can't seem to kill the 4200mAh battery within a 24 hour period. I managed to watch 3 hours of YouTube on top of a full day's usage and still maintained over 30% battery and end up with a screen on time figure of almost 7 hours. This is literally peak battery life. In terms of camera hardware, you are given one of the most interesting setups for all around photo taking capabilities. Huawei partnered again with Leica, I don't see anything that leads me to believe that Leica have had a huge amount of input though, and the net result is a main 40 megapixel main sensor, 8 megapixel 3x telephoto zoom lens, and arguably the best addition, the 12 megapixel wide angle lens. Ditching the monochromatic sensor found on the P20 was a wise decision, and it's just so much fun to use. It gives you a good array of options to get the shot that you want, and rewards photo taking experimentation. As for image quality, it's another area in which the Huawei Mate 20 Pro excels. Is it the best camera system on the market? I'd have to say no, judging by what the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL are capable of, but it really does stack up well against some of the best cameras on the market. At the core of this is the enhanced night mode, which was equally impressive on the Huawei P20 Pro. It enables insanely detailed night photos, and all it takes is a steady hand and a few seconds to get some of the best nighttime photos on any smartphone. I'm looking forward to pitting the device against the Google Pixel 3's night sight to really see how it stacks up. 
The 24 megapixel front facing camera is good, offers a good portrait mode, skin tone adjustments and skin smoothing for the real selfie taker. And although I'm not one to take many selfies, I found the face detection to be half decent, in part thanks to the AI system using the face ID information to track you. That said, the fake bokeh is still a work in progress and it seems to fringe upon the main subject sometimes. This leads me to the camera AR modes which were mighty impressive at the live London keynote. The AR lens mode enables you to create 3D Qmoji which are the best Animoji ripoff on the market. It's still a massive gimmick and not something you use more than once or twice though. Overall the camera setup is a beast, you've got some serious grunt and I do love the flexibility that it offers. Huawei are clearly upping their own camera game and whilst it isn't perfect, it's moving the ball for Huawei faster than some of the chasing pack and that's what matters here. So in summary, my gut instinct was to be skeptical of the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. I am honestly shocked at how much I've enjoyed this device. Huawei have tried to throw everything but the kitchen sink inside, with almost no compromises, MIUI most definitely being a major compromise, and the net result is easily one of the most impressive full packages on the market right now. The biggest crying shame is that this device is not reaching US shores officially. Is there an audience in the United States for the Huawei Mate 20 Pro? I personally think that there is more than enough intrigue and interest. Huawei are now doing so much so well that it would be silly to simply dismiss them. That said, buying a line is still an option if you want one of the real candidates for the smartphone of the year. I'd absolutely love to know what you think. Would you buy the Mate 20 Pro if it were available in the United States? Let me know in the comments section below and remember to subscribe for more Android and Google related content. Thank you again for watching. This is Damien for 95 Google and I will speak to you later.